Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Dr. Osman Akhtar and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our topic is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency anemia which is also called G6PD deficiency anemia. So it is a type of uh, hemolytic anemia where there is a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and most important this is a genetic disorder so first of all we should understand which type of the genetic disorder is this so look at here g6pd gene is basically present on the x chromosome so for example if x chromosome is defective so if this x chromosome is goes to the male baby so because the male have only one x chromosome so that one chromosome which is effective will lead to disease and that baby but if one effective X chromosome goes to a female baby so because female baby have two X chromosome so this baby one will be uh, effective uh, X uh, chromosome and another will be normal so this baby female baby usually their carrier so X chromosome is effective and this G6PD deficiency anemia so it is only seen in uh, male babies while the female babies are act as a carrier. So let's let's go into the uh, role of glucose 6-phosphate in a RBC. How it causes uh, how its defici deficiency causes uh, hemolysis. Under the normal uh, metabolism in our body, free radical is produced. So these free radical usually damage our cells through DNA destruction or damage, through protein damage or cell membrane damage. For these free radicals, to neutralize these free radicals, in our body we have antioxidants, for example glutathione. These glutathione usually act in a reduced form. So whenever the free radical is produced in our body, this reduced form of glutathione act on this free radical and make them neutralize and itself goes into the oxidized form. So for glutathione to act we need its reduced form but here is it is on oxidized form. To, to convert it into the reduced form we need NADPH. So we are, we are concerned here with RBCs. So if we look at the RBCs this NADPH is come from the glycolysis and the f most important source is this when the glucose 6-phosphate is converted into 6-phosphogluconate by the enzyme action of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So in this uh, condition where we have glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, so there will be reduced uh, NADPH production or we can say deficient or absent so but but here it will be deficient so reduced uh, or we can say less amount of glucose 6-phosphate there will be reduced or we can say less uh, uh, amount of NADPH so less amount of glutathione will be converted from oxidized form into reduced form so here we don't have enough NADPH or in other words we can say we have a limited or reduced or less amount of glutathione. So these free radicals will damage these RBCs. In spite of uh, destroying the RBCs, it, these free radicals sometimes can damage the hemoglobin. So whenever these free radicals damage the hemoglobin, these damaged hemoglobin sometimes stored or we can say uh, form inclusion bodies inside the RBC which we will call hence bodies or sometimes these inclusion bodies in the RBC or hence body in the RBC when they pass from the spleen or reticuloendothelial system these macrophages eat that inclusion part of the RBC which on peripheral smear later on looks like a bite cell so bite cell and hens bodies are seen in G6PD. However, these hens bodies are also seen in the uh, thalassemia. 
we should know when these free radical increase in our body which we also call increase free radical stress in our body so look at here some infections like viral hepatitis or pneumonia or food for our beans or red wine these can increase the free radical in our body drugs like sulfur drugs we have um, sulfur antibiotics or anti-malarial drugs specifically primaquine or quinine and antipyretic drugs these uh, infection foods and various drugs they increase the level of free radicals so these free radicals will be increased in our body and cannot be neutralized by glutathione so these free radicals will destroy the rbc and will lead to severe hemolysis now let's go into the clinical feature of g6pd deficiency anemia so as earlier we discussed that these free radicals sometimes cause severe hemolysis and these hemolysis is so severe because of that sometimes the hb drops to even 2 to 3 gram per dl so because of that there will be hyperbilirubinemia but one another very good point about uh, or we can say in this uh, disease that this hemolysis only occur for a uh, um, limited time or we can say in, occur in episodes and only destroyed the old rbc so sometimes there is a uh, free radical uh, stress in our body and g6pd deficiency anemia but there is no hemolysis it shows that the all rbc old rbc are dead now and the present rbc are only the young ones and in between the uh, episodes of hemolysis the patient will be normal because of the hemolysis there will be jaundice and paler we can uh, for jaundice we will look for a sclera, a sclera or um, uh, the mucous membrane of the mouth or we if the jaundice is very severe we can even uh, look at the, on the skin there will be paler and hemoglobin urea the urine will be uh, the hemoglobin will pass into the urine because of its uh, metabolism let's look at the diagnosis now and diagnosis like other hemolysis or anemia there will be decreased rbc if we look at the urine ur routine examination there will be hemoglobin urea on peripheral smear as we discussed earlier there will be hence bodies which are inclusion bodies these are basically these are insoluble uh, inclusion bodies and these inclusion bodies when passed from the macrophages they take a bite which is then dead rbc is called bite cells and there will be low g6pd level which is less than 15 percent but for the diagnosis please remember the family history family history is very important in every uh, g6pd baby child they, they they will have a family history either but but the in family also there will be a male uh, patient not a female patient if we look at uh, the treatment most of the episode are hemolysis are self-limiting this is a very satisfactory point and uh, should avoid food and drugs that food we as we uh, discussed earlier for our beans and red wines and drugs are the sulfur drugs uh, anti malaria anti pyretic anti pyretics but one uh, let me discuss one point here specifically in african or we can say in pakistan where the malaria is endemic so before uh, I, I saw it in many MCQs as well that which before which drug we should uh, do a g6pd test because we are pain, uh, endemic for the uh, malaria so before giving the prima queen we should always do g6pd we should rule out the g6pd deficiency patient because it can cause severe hemolysis so remember this point for your clinical practice or uh, exam point of view and if uh, for infections we should use proper antibiotic because that as we we used uh, we discussed earlier that viral hepatitis and pneumonia can increase the free uh, radical stress in our body and can cause severe hemolysis and if the hemolysis is severe we should go for blood transfusion
Thank you so much.